fall. It means there's a crisp chill in the air. It's time to gather wood for the season's first fire, and the leaves are piling up outside. But along the coast of South Carolina, fall is kind of like summer, only cooler. Fires are simply for roasting oysters, and the only raking you might do is in a sand trap of one of our many challenging golf courses. Tap now to discover the joys of fall on the coast of South Carolina, or visit fallinsc.com. And we're live. Welcome to Strikeout Beer, the Sunday show with your pal RD flying solo tonight. Now, I got this camera that's focusing in, unfocusing and stuff like that. So I don't know what's going to happen, to be honest with you. But cheers to another beautiful Sunday. Boop, there you go. Uh, having a couple, uh, I put two Pilsners in one of my giant uh, steins that I have that holds about, I would say, almost 36 ounces, you know. But it's got 24 in it. Maybe it's a 30 ounce stein. I don't know. Maybe I should check the limits on these things. Anyway, another beautiful Sunday. Um, so glad to be here. Obviously, I stayed around the house today. It is a soggy, soggy day here in North Texas. Um, just constant, just S falling out of the sky. We got old school wizard in this house. What's up, brother? How you doing? Glad to see you. And I was messing with my camera earlier, and you now and now I'm just like, okay, I don't know what to do with it. Like, I don't, I don't even know what's going on. I hit the button. I said, you know what? Let's just let's let's get after it. So tonight we're going to talk. Uh, went out last night. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I played some golden tea and some bowling. Um, then NFL today just sat around and, and watched the games for the most part, and then you know had a couple beers and went for a little little stroll in the the drizzle, if you want to call it that. And then uh, got some upcoming events, and uh, we're going to talk about a. a brewery that's uh near and dear to our hearts at close that will be closing on december 2nd but without further ado let's talk a little before we get into football let's talk about last night so anyways um family got together my brother me the wives the sister-in-laws you know whatnot and uh we went out we started off at boomer jacks had some beers we kind of feeling lubricated you know having some food having some beers and chilling and relaxing and uh it's it I, we can't just sit there Right, we can't just sit there enjoy ourselves. There's a billion games on. We're talk, we're talking, we're chatting it up, but it's like he always wants to go do something. Always wants to do something. So he's like, "There's golden tea over there, bro. Let's go play some." You ever played? I go, "Yeah, I played it before." He goes, "Oh man, I'm gonna kick your ass." He's always real competitive. I don't know. He's the younger brother, but he's super competitive. I don't know. I don't know what his deal is. So, anyways, we go over there and he start. He he learns very quickly that I've played this game before because I'm putting like backspin and release on the ball. I'm I'm taking different angles towards the greens and stuff. And anyways, then he gets pissed off. The game sucks, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he loses. And he's like, let's go bowling, bro. Let's go. Let's go over there and go bowling. It's like, dude, my hands are killing me. So if you don't know uh, this about me, uh, my hands, they get super dry. They crack and bleed. Then they go almost numb. Um, so I got these like, I don't know, they, they almost go like, like numb at the end. And I can't feel anything. You know what I mean? I can't grip anything. Everything's super slick. Like, I can't even take a paper off a straw without it, like, hurting or bothering me. I have to, like, tear it and then pull it off. So, anyways, after all that, then we go bowling. And so I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, my God. And I think I, I was already, like, liquored up a little bit. So I'm, like, humming this 14-pound ball down the, the down the lane. Just, like, like, I don't know how I didn't go through the back of the damn eye, the, the lane. If, somebody, if it didn't hit anything, it was going boom. So we had fun. Um, they ended up shutting down early because they had a plumbing problem. So I'm like looking at my brother. I'm like, what the hell did you do? Because, <laughs> I mean, he disappeared for a little bit. It was either him or Lizzie. I can't remember. And uh, But, yeah, I ended up done with that. What's up, Lizzie? How you doing? And so we're sitting there. We Like I said, we were bowling and having a fun time. My hands are killing me. I woke up the next morning. I asked Lizzie. I go, do we have a fucking car wreck last night? My shoulders and my back, everything was hurting, and like my neck. And so apparently, me chunking that ball as hard as I could, hurt. I got hurt. I hurt myself. So now my neck and my shoulders, I already kind of had problems. I had a dirt bike accident when I was like 25 or 26 years old, maybe 28, where I almost, like I shot off my bike like 30 feet in the air and landed head first into like a hole. And like my, oh, my, my whole spine like cracked. Like it just went, it was crazy as shit, you know. It was bonkers to be honest with you. So it I never really felt right around where my neck and my shoulders meet. It's always been there's some numb and some tingliness every so often. So it is what it is. 
Anyway, so after we get done with that, we get home, we sleep in. I sleep in the entire freaking Saturday. I wake up, get coffee, go back to bed. Wake up, get breakfast, go back to bed. Wake up, grab some lunch, go back to bed. I laid in bed until like 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. I finally got up, took a shower. I watched Scrooged while I was in bed as well. So that was a highlight of my day. And then I watched Buster Scruggs, the ballad of Buster Scruggs. I don't know if y'all seen that. It's weird. It's like six different short stories. The first one's the best. Everything else is just kind of like, you know, whatever. But holy hell, I was like just intrigued. It came out like in 2019, 2020 maybe? Maybe in 21. I don't know. But anyways, it was wild. It was on Netflix. So I watched that. And then uh, played some Rocket League and then called it a night. Thought about streaming, didn't stream. I was like, you know what? I'm not doing it. I don't feel like it. And Lizzie was like, I'm surprised you weren't streaming. I was like, well, you didn't get the notification. So, you know, I wasn't. I was out cold. I was so I was out when she got home. I just noticed that I can always sense evil when it enters the room. And so that's how I knew when she got home. You know? <laughs> anyway, yeah. I don't know if anybody watched the games today. Um there was a ton of teams on by you can. We know what we're actually going to go through the NFL now. I'm waiting for her to come in here and hit me. I'm like, just I'm gonna. There's gonna be like a. <laughs> there's gonna be like a freaking uh a sandal go <laughs> right by my head in a minute. Oh, come on, babe. Anyways, NFL week eleven. Here we go. There's four teams on bye weeks. This probably affected your team just due to the teams that were involved: Falcons, Colts, Patriots, and Saints. I had to bench uh, Jonathan Taylor and Kamara this week. Uh, I don't have anybody from the Patriots. Uh, Falcons, you know, if you're a Bijan guy or a uh, or even Algier at this point, you know. So this is a weird part. I'm going to say this now. There's no teams on bye week next week on the 12th. It's short week. It's holiday week. You know what I mean? So they need all hands on deck. Week 13, though. The Ravens, Bills, Bears, Raiders, Vikings, and Giants. It's too late in the season for this crap. Like, seriously, it's too late to be having this bonker-ass stuff. Nobody, just let figure it out, man. Why do some weeks we have, like, two teams on bye weeks, and sometimes we have five or six, and it's not great. I don't like it at all. And it really affects my fantasy football team, and that's what all that matters to me. Now, what we're going to do is go down the list. We're going to talk about all the games just like we always do. I do have to come in and refresh some of these stats because some of these games weren't over when I refreshed earlier. So just, you know, if you see me, you wonder what the hell I'm doing. I'm clicking. I'm clicking away. Here we go. Are we ready? Let's get into it. The Cincinnati Bengals come down from the jungle to go to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. You all know what happened. Joe Burrow got hurt. He's out for the season with a wrist injury. He's got to have surgery. Serious, serious. The season. I said it last week when the season was over and they lost to the Texans. It's over now, officially. No question about it. Baltimore Ravens are actually looking really damn good. You know, it was going to be a really nice game. Baltimore won 34 to 20. And I was like, hey, here we go. A little bit of a shootout. Should be a lot of fun. You know, Burrow tossed a touchdown, tossed 100 yards too. Mixon led the team in rushing with 69 yards. Uh, Tanner Hudson led the team in, uh, in receiving four for 49. Uh, Jamar Chase caught two balls for 12 yards. That's not going to get it done. You know, he's your best player. I understand him mixing even caught five for 31. So Trent Irwin, you know, picked one up or picked three up as well. So, I mean, with that team in kind of disarray, if you're looking, I just traded for uh, Jamar Chase because um, we're in a league where we get to have a keeper. And I don't, the, the team that I have, I don't like any of them. So I went ahead and made an offer. Uh, I traded Flowers, um, Lockett, and Kincaid for Pickens and, um, and Jamar Chase. I really didn't want to even use that many players. I was like, I think we can get this done with two, but we just, I was kind of helping as a friend of mine too. So I was like, all right, let me get you. He lost. Um, it's going to come back and bite me. I know it is. He lost. What's his name from uh, Baltimore? What the hell is his name? Andrews, you know, and I lost him in the league. So he's done for the season too. Let's not, let's not forget about that. You know, they rolled up and they said there's, it's potentially season ending. It looks season ending. They already talked about how it's season ending. So whatever I'm kind I'm considering it season ending. Lamar Jackson had 264 yards, uh, or tossing 264 yards with two touchdowns. Gus the Bus Edwards ran two more in. The guy is a menace, you know. He goes from, like, having no relevancy to, boom, all of a sudden. But uh, Lamar Jackson was the number two guy there, 54 yards rushing. Odell Beckham had himself a night, four for 116. Uh, Nelson Aguilar cut a touchdown, and so did the Rashad Bateman. So um, that's really it for that game. That game 
I mean, it hurt my heart to be honest with you. And but I was already kind of thinking, I was like, well, it's it's tough to go to the Super Bowl, then go back to the AFC Championship game, and then go back for three years in a row. They could have done it, but you know, now it's over. You know what I mean? Like now, it's just it's not possible without Burrow. If Burrow's hurt, then that's what it is. What it is. Um, boo, 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 boo. the Pittsburgh Steelers go over to Cleveland and take on those Browns. Um. Browns held on. It was a sloppy, boring ass game, to be honest with you. I mean, 13 to 10, not a lot of action. There was some amazing plays, like Jalen Warren rushed for uh 129 yards and a touchdown. I think 84 of that or 79, it was 79 or 84 was one rush. It was amazing. Way downtown, man. Just freaking trucking it. Uh Najee Harris only ran for 35 yards. Uh Pickens caught four for 38. Allen Robinson, three for 20. Jalen Warren tacked on another three catches, uh, three for 16. And uh, let's head on over to the Browns. Dorian Thompson Robinson, the law firm, uh, had zero touchdowns, one interception, 165 yards. Jerome Ford punched one in from the goal line. And some people said he wasn't in. I was like, he was in. He totally looked in. Ball crossed the line. Watch your mouth. Uh, Elijah Moore, six for 60, which was really good. Amari Cooper actually got four for 34. David Njoku showing up, little seven for 56 action. That was real respectable, and he hasn't done much lately. So there you go. Uh Browns are right there on the hunt, but with no quarterback, I got a problem, or they have a problem. Who's and chill in the house? What up? How we doing? Cheers. Oh, man. So, I mean, the Browns are picking off kind of terrible teams, and Pittsburgh's not even a bad team this year. I think Pittsburgh's done just fine. Fine and dandy. They're holding on. They're holding their own, but, <clears throat> you know, put up 10 points against the Browns. Now, Browns do have a number one overall defense. So, yeah, cheers. Kachel, I appreciate you coming in here. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Um, and so moving on, this was kind of a skull scratcher, a little little scalp scratcher, if you want to talk about the Raiders heading over to Miami, take on the Dolphins. The Dolphins have been a powerhouse and they're really good against bad teams, but Vegas Raiders are not a great team. You know, yeah, they swapped out their, I think their GM, their coach and all that kind of stuff. So they're kind of re revamping, but buddy, they were, they weren't ready. And the Dolphins should have creamed them and they had a chance. It was just, it, it got ugly. Aiden O'Connell threw like three interceptions, but he had a touchdown. Congratulations. Rushing yards. Uh, Jacob, Josh Jacobs had 39 total. Trey Tucker had negative six yards. It was like, a, I think it was one of those stupid uh, jet sweeps that he got uh, eaten up. Devontae Adams makes a day, a nice little day about it. Seven receptions for 82 yards and a touchdown. Jacoby Myers, 449. Michael Mayer, 446. Um, heading over to the Dolphins. My goodness, I hope you watched it. I really do hope you caught this game because you, you, Tyreek Hill is fast as f. Two went through two touchdowns, one interception, three hundred twenty-five yards. Raheem Mostert led the day, uh, twenty-two carries for eighty-six yards. I mean, absolutely killed it. A chain only uh, he had one carry for one yard. That was it. Yep, got to put this out there. I'm not a sports guy, but you drink beer, and that's cool. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You know, I was sitting there watching your channel, dude, and I was like, you know, we need to. Uh, we need to get on, like, you know, we'll have you on or something like that on one of our live shows on Wednesday nights. We usually go live on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. That's our regular show time because uh, I like all the content you have out there, all these cool beer reviews and the chats and stuff like that. You go live as well. Um, we'd love to have you on and just kind of sit there and chill. We're, we're live Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Central time. So if that's a if that's a time, you know, that work, maybe we can message one another and uh, and hook up. Maybe even uh, coordinate the beer or something like that as well. Um, but, yeah, so Dolphins. I mean, Tyree Kill had 146 yards on 10 catches and a touchdown. Ahmed had three for uh, 25 and a, a TD. Waddle just still hadn't found the end zone. He has not found it. Uh, he didn't find it again today. Four for 55. I'm not saying he's a bust, but, man, I really thought Waddle was going to have a hell of a year, to be honest. Dude, definitely. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Absolutely. Yeah, this is just the Sunday show after I watch some football. I'm like, right, let me sit down for a little bit. I talk about, like, the, the shenanigans I get into on the weekend. Uh, upcoming events, um, the preview to the show this week, and then, but yeah, I run through some stats and whatnot. Of course, I got <laughs> TJ just texts goes, "Bro, how the f is Zach Wilson still in the, still in the NFL?" I'm like, "Well, he got he got benched, so he's uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't I don't see him being a starter for much uh, longer." All right, here you go, uh, Chicago Bears, Dub Bears go to Detroit to take on the Lions. This was a weird, wacky game, to be honest. The the Lions trailed most of this game, and the Bears are not good, right? You've heard you've heard it from Allen, right? The Bears suck. That's all he says. The Bears suck. The Bears were beating the piss out of the Lions the entire game, right? I mean, just really handling them. But I, I shouldn't say the entire game because I'll be honest. It was it was fourteen to ten in the in the second at the end of the half, right? Then the Bears come out and score ten. Then they score they six in the fourth. But then 
the Lions come back, score 17 in the fourth, and walk off with the, the win there. Justin Fields tossed one touchdown and 169, yard, uh, 169 yards. He, he was more – he was dangerous on the ground. He 18 carries for 104 yards. Khalil Herbert, I didn't hear much about him. 16 carries for 35. That was it. Every time I looked, turn on the damn television, it was Roshan Johnson or Deontay Foreman. Deontay Foreman got the touchdown. Uh, now, DJ Moore, seven for 96 and a touchdown, which, oh, man, I thought he was going to get another one, too. I was so excited. I was like, come on, baby. Um, but, yeah, they just fall short. Now, the Lions, Jared Goff had a tough day. He threw three interceptions against a terrible player. So, three three interceptions, two touchdowns. Uh, Montgomery rushed one in. So did Jamar Gibbs. Montgomery was the lead back today for 76 yards. Ma Ross St. Brown, eight for 77 and a touchdown. James Williams, Jameson Williams, uh, two for 44 and a touchdown. Jamar Gibbs, pretty good in receiving area. He went six for 55. So, But the, the, the game itself, I was sitting there thinking about it, and I was like, you know, if I hear one more person tell me that the Lions are good, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because if you damn near lose to a terrible team, you're not good. You know what I mean? You're barely the Dallas Cowboys at this part. And you're going to find out if you're as good as the Cowboys come December. So start playing some teams and start playing well because that is sloppy. Three interceptions against the Bears. Three interceptions. I I I don't get it. You know, they everybody still talks about how I think it's just their record. I think they're eight and two. They've played a bunch of nobodies. You know, I think everyone still harps on the fact that they beat the the Chiefs week one. Chiefs didn't have Kelsey, Chiefs didn't have Chris Jones. They looked off anyways, but they they and I think it was it the referees that won that game. I think it was the referees that won that game. I forgot about that. So anyway, yeah, no, I, I don't believe this is one team that I don't believe in, and I don't care uh moving on tennessee titans went to jacksonville take on the jaguars it was jaguars all day 34 to 14 uh will levis threw two touchdowns though uh jerry henry had 38 rushing yards so did chris moore he had 38 as well but chris moore had uh 38 on one rush derrick henry had uh 38 on 10 rushes deandre hopkins hauled in an amazing touchdown uh jeffrey simmons caught a touchdown as well uh not much offense i mean levis is getting a little bit better he's under pressure constantly he was sacked beat up everything else today Trevor Lawrence looked pretty good. He had uh, two touchdowns. He ran two of them in, and then he threw two to Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley had a hell of a day. Seven for 103, two touchdowns, like I said. Um, Travis Etienne ran for 52 yards. He led the, the backfield. Christian Kirk only went for 48 yards on three catches. And uh, But, yeah, no, it was, a, it was a fun game to watch. It was eight early games on the red zone, so you just got to sit there and chill and watch and uh, just enjoy the afternoon, right? It was awesome. Damn, I almost choking on my beer over here. All right. Then we start getting to the afternoon games. Chargers versus the Green Bay. Was that an early game? Might have been an early game. Yeah. 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 I think so. I don't know. Anyways, Chargers Green Bay. This was an S show, to be honest. Herbert threw two touchdowns for 260 yards. Um, he ran for a 73 yards, which was crazy. Austin Eckler only ran for 64 yards. Keenan Allen got a touchdown. Should have had another. He's crossing the goal line. The sun's in his eyes and it hits him right in the chest and it just bounces right off. Just poof. Parham only got uh, four for 57. He should have got a touchdown as well. Stone Smart actually got the touchdown. He went for one for one, uh, excuse me, 50-yard touchdown. Caught one ball, made it 51 yards. Made it count, made it count. <laughs> excuse me. Jordan Love, 322 yards and two TDs. Jalen Reed caught one of those, or actually, excuse me, Jalen Reed ran one of those in. Uh, he had three carries for 46 yards as a receiver, which is really weird. Romeo Dubs had a uh, touchdown along with Christian Watson. Uh, Dontavian Wicks led the team in not receptions, but total yards, 91. Um, when I say total yards, I mean receiving yards. But Romeo Dodds was 5 for 53. That was a pretty good little fun fun day. You're sitting there watching so many errors, drops. Like, you're looking at the Chargers. I think they're, like, the most disappointing team in the league this year. Like, the expectation, the talent, and everything that they that, that was there in the preseason, they, they are not performing uh, where they should be, like, at all. Green, they had the lead. They had the lead the entire freaking game. Damn near. And then just coughed it up. I mean, to the Green Bay Packers. Jesus. It was ridiculous. It was a painful to watch. Like, I was like, God, I was like, damn it, just change it to something else. Just get off of this game. It sucks. Then you had a uh, Arizona Cardinals went to Houston. Um, did I say who won that? It's 20 to 23. Green Bay Packers win. All right. Moving on to Cardinals and Texas, 16 to 21. Now, the Cardinals got Kyler Murray back. 
yeah, let's see it. You know, Kyler Murray had 214 yards, one touchdown, an interception. If you're watching the game, he's getting a lot of balls batted down. I mean, he's like five foot tall. He can't throw it over the damn defensive line. You know, if they don't even have to put their hands up for the most part, shit. I mean, he's ill him in the damn head. James Conner had 62 yards. Kyler Murray rushed one in, um, threw one to Rondell Moore. Now, that was a pretty sweet catch. Uh, that was pretty good. I really thought that was going to ignite it. I go, here they come. I go, it's going to be awesome. But, you know, with Houston, uh, with C.J. Stroud, he was looking he was looking good in the first half, terrible in the second half. He threw for 336 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. Um, it was kind of wild. Now, Devin Singletary had another great week, 22 uh, carries. Talking about the, uh, the Chargers. Kurt Russell has uh, Kurt Russell has an arm, too. Who the hell is Kurt Russell? Like the actor? <laughs> Talking about the Chargers QB? I got you. <clears throat> I, I don't get Herbert. Like, I, I'm, I'll be honest with you, dude. I, I don't get Herbert. I, damn it. He should. <sighs> they should be doing so much better. Anyways, um, Houston keeps the winning streak going 21 to 16. And like I said, it, it he fell apart, apart towards the end. It was rough watching. But like I said, Singletary, 112 yards and a touchdown. And then you had uh, Tank Dell, eight for 149 and a touchdown. Dalton Shorts gold one as well. So a lot of good, a lot of action, a lot of fun. But it was a nail biter. No one scored in the fourth quarter. Like they just all of a sudden, no one could do anything. Oh, I got, I got you. Sorry, I'm weird. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Um, Houston wins again. CJ Stroud was on pace, I think, for like 500 yards at the half, and it just fell off. Like fell off. So it was fun to watch at the beginning. And then it's like, all right, this sucks. It's like you know, a bunch of like everybody just hand slapping one another. You know. Um, let me take a sip. Next up, we got Dallas Cowboys heading to Carolina to take on the Panthers. You know, every time they get a chance to play a very terrible team, they show up and play. It was actually really close until like the th the second half, to be honest. It wasn't – it was tied at one point. In the third quarter, it was tied. You know, oh, no, I'm sorry. No, no, it was 10 to 17. Excuse me, I'm sorry. 10 to 17, and then Cowboys score like 16. Prescott threw two touchdowns, 183 yards. Tony Pollard, 61 yards and one touchdown. Cooper Rush into the game for a little bit just to finish it off. CeeDee Lamb, six for 38 and a touchdown. Brandon Cooks, he led the team in receiving yards, 42. Uh, Luke Shoemaker had a touchdown as well. I mean, there was a pick six. Was it Bland? I think Bland had a pick six. Yep, Darren Bland. He had an interception, a little pick six action. So there was a – Cowboys had a lot of good things about this game. But then again, they're playing a terrible team, right? They're playing a team that has <clears> – <throat> um, a one, their one win. Let's be honest. And Bryce Young has not shined yet. 123 yards, one touchdown, an interception. Chuba Hubbard looked good. You know, 10 for 57 on the ground. Miles Sanders had 50 yards as well. Uh, Tommy Tremble had the touchdown receiving that uh, Bryce threw to him. Adam Thielen led the uh, led the team eight for 74. Good, great. There's really nothing to write. Is anybody surprised at this game? No. It's the one and nine Carolina Panthers. Zycam knows that when you live life to the fullest, you never want to let a cold slow you down. With Zycam's cold shortening products, you can actually shorten colds when taken at the first sign. And with the winter chill in the air, you need the number one cold shortening brand to help shorten a cold when taken at the first sign this season. Because you should never let a cold stop you from missing out on your favorite moments of the season. Find Zycam in your local cold and flu aisle. fall. It means there's a crisp chill in the air. It's time to gather wood for the season's first fire, and the leaves are piling up outside. But along the coast of South Carolina, fall is kind of like summer, only cooler. Fires are simply for roasting oysters, and the only raking you might do is in a sand trap of one of our many challenging golf courses. Tap now to discover the joys of fall on the coast of South Carolina, or visit fallinsc.com. Uh, you know, are you playing in the parade again? You know, you beat another terrible team. Don't care. Beat somebody. You know what I mean? Until you, you know what, if you don't play anyway, what's up, Cletus? Your schedule gets slightly more difficult in the upcoming weeks, but Jesus Christ, you don't play nobody. <clears throat> Here is, I think, the upset of the week. This is one of the craziest effing games. The Giants beat the Commanders in Washington. 31-19. DeVito! 
DeVito showed up, 246 yards, three touchdowns. Saquon, at first you're like, oh, man, this guy, he's not having a good day rushing, you know what I mean? But he ends up putting up 83 yards. Like, check this, two touchdowns in the air, four for 57. I was like, holy shit, and uh, Darius Slayton caught one. He went four for 82, and he caught a touchdown as well. Um, I was just shocked the entire time. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> it's like, because the commanders were like a heavy favorite here. I mean, the Giants are terrible, like terrible. But I think it really does show how awful the commanders are as well. Like the NFC East is just a, half of them are good. Half of them are not good, right? The Cowboys are okay. The Eagles are good. Giants and Washington are just not good. Yet. But we'll see. You know, we'll see. DeVito's finding his feet. I mean, that's one thing you can say about DeVito, right? He's just a kid, rookie, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to call it. And now he's finally getting some, uh, what's your name? I'm having a, um, a Pilsner from a, a local brewery around here. Brutal Beer Works. Yep. That's my go-to beer. Pilsners and Kolsch's. Those are my favorite. You know, but when you get further into the wintertime, stouts and porters, but they just got too many, there's too much sugar in them and, and too many like carbs and shit. So I try to stay away from them, especially if it's like a day where I'm sitting out here and I'm like knocking back maintaining throughout the day you might be out back working on something or in the house working on a project or whatever and i just like want to just steady sipper it's gonna be a pilsner pilsner or kolsch easy drinking clean nothing too heavy the abv is always right there on the in the sweet spot uh then all right this is not a shocker tampa bay lost the niners 14 to 27 baker mayfield tried he had 246 yards a touchdown interception rashad white uh had nine carries 30 yards and a touchdown Mike Evans had a, a beautiful snag. He went five for 43 and a touchdown. Uh, and that was pretty much it for the Bucs. They tried. I mean, they had chances, like a lot of chances. Uh, Brock Purdy threw for 333 yards, three touchdowns. Christian McCaffrey ran for 78 yards. Uh, Brandon Ayuk had a hell of a day, five receptions for 156 yards, a touchdown. George Kittle, eight for 89 and a touchdown. Uh, Debo Sino had three for 63, and then Christian McCaffrey, yeah clocked in another five for 25 and a touchdown really good stuff because the re i remember like so i'm on this was it underdog or something like that it's a fun little app it's you know they call it fantasy football but all you're doing is prop betting like i don't know how they get away with it calling it fantasy football but it's fun <laughs> let me refresh this one real quick i think this game is over now now they're still in the fourth quarter so we must be going too fast we must be going too fast the jets i mean it's over it's been over for a, a while now um jets are they pretty much lost 32 to six right now against the Buffalo bills. Uh, Zach Wilson's in, uh, he's been pulled. I'm pretty sure they've already had two other people throw passes. Tim Boyle was in there. The last time I checked, they said Thomas Morstead threw one. Uh, so just a terrible shit show of a day. They're terrible. Like Brees all had a touchdown receiving five for 50. Um, yeah, they are, I think not the most disappointing team in the league, but they are pretty Pretty awful. Josh Allen had three touchdowns and interception for 275 yards. Uh, James Cook, 73 yards on the ground. Uh, Khalil Shakir, three for uh, 115 and a touchdown. Dalton Kincaid, six for 46, no touchdown. James Cook, three for 29 and a touchdown. Accidentally drank invisible ink. Now I'm in the hospital waiting to be seen. <laughs> and this week's dad joke is brought to you by JB Carts. Check them out on Facebook and Instagram and at jbcarts.com. There you go. I was actually hanging out with JB last night. Oh, so this game's pretty much over. I mean, who, you know, no one really cares. Uh, let me see the other. Oh, <coughs> we got a late upset. Seattle getting beat by the Rams. 17 to 16. Now, let's be fair. Chino Smith went out in like the third quarter, I think. I think it was like the late third quarter. So then you put Drew Lock in. He ain't doing shit. So once that happened, it was over. Um, DK Metcalf had 94 yards and a touchdown. Tyler Lockett, 551, no touchdown. And Drew Lock sucks. I mean, you give him a chance maybe to warm up, you know, little game plan maybe. But, yeah, Matt Stafford didn't look good either. 190 yards, a touchdown, and interception. Uh, Royce Freeman led the uh, the groundwork. I mean, pretty much all of it, essentially. 17 for 73. Now, they did give the ball to Daryl Henderson. He had six carries in one fucking yard. Excuse the language. They put him on the one-yard line. And he scores the touchdown. Six carries, one yard. Puka, five receptions for 70 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Cooper Cup only had one reception for 11 yards. Is that not insane? That's that's bonkers, man. That's, that's just shit you can't even make up. Uh, tonight's game, the 720 game, which uh, will be going down in about 30 minutes. You got the Minnesota Vikings 
at Denver Broncos. I'm pretty sure the Broncos are the favorite here, even though they're four and five and the Minnesota Vikings are six and four. It's pretty much a toss up though. You know, I really like the way both these teams are playing. You actually are, I, you're, I think you're in store for a pretty fun Sunday night game. I think so. Um, both defenses are in middle of the road. So there's going to be some offense. The Broncos have beaten the Bills and the Chiefs, I'm pretty sure, in the back-to-back games over the last two weeks. And the Vikings are on a road, like a four-game winning streak. So watch out. It's going to be fun. And in the Monday night game, we're gonna it's it's Super Bowl revisited. It's the Eagles and the Chiefs. Watch out. Let's let's see it. This might be a preview for the Super Bowl again this year. If the Chiefs can get back there, I, I don't think the Eagles are gonna have too much difficulty reaching the Super Bowl. There's not really a NFC team that kind of gets in their way. We're gonna talk about uh the NFC standings and the AFC standings. Now, the AFC standings won't be complete because the, the Bills are still playing, but I don't think they get they move up or down. Uh, depending on anything. So, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Uh, you want to do NFC or AFC first? Let's do NFC first. Make sure that I got that click there. All right, let's start with the NFC least. Eagles eight and one, Cowboys seven and three, Commanders four and seven, Giants three and eight. Uh, again, I, you know, for me, I, I don't see any. If you see the if the Eagles lose Monday to the Chiefs, and the Cowboys are now within like a game. Depending on, I mean, they both the Eagles have a tough schedule. Their next five or six games are tough. The Cowboys' next five or six games are, are soft. Cowboys could somehow squeak out the, the division win, but I mean, both teams I think are going to make the playoffs. I don't see any issue with that. And now, when I did say the Eagles, like I was like, oh yeah, no one's going to challenge them. Let me walk that back a half step because we're going to talk about the NFC East now. The Niners are back on the winning path, seven and three. Seahawks are six and four. Rams four and six. Cardinals two and nine. Seahawks losing, uh, depending on the extent of, uh, or extent of what the hell is his name? Oh, my God. <laughs> Geno Smith. Depending on his, his injury, the Seahawks might be done for the year, right? They're not going anywhere with Drew Locke. They're, they'll probably, they could finish behind the Rams at this point. Um, hell, behind the Cardinals. But Niners are back on track, back-to-back -back wins, must-wins after uh, doing a three-game lo losing streak before their bye week. Give me the Niners to win this division. Probably they're going to win the NFC, to be honest with you. Now let's move on to the NFC North. The Lions, 8-2, and two, Vikings 6-4, and four, Packers 4-6, and six, and the Bears 3-8. and eight. Let's just say this. the This division has been reignited with the Vikings uh, getting Dobbs as their quarterback, right? Kirk Cousins going down. They go get Dobbs. Bing, bang, boom. All of a sudden, they're on fire again. Um, yeah, the Lions are at 8-2, and two, but eh, I, I just don't see it. To be honest, I, I don't really care. I, I just don't think they're going to beat anybody. And we can take a look at their schedule if you want. I mean, I'm sitting here with nothing to do. They do have a super soft schedule. They're they're hosting the Packers next week on on Thanksgiving. Then they got to go. They got to play the Saints, which is uh, not a great team. Then they got to go to the, the Chicago and play the Bears, which sucked. You host the Broncos, but if the Broncos are on fire, watch out. Then they got to go to the Minnesota. They got to play Minnesota twice in the last two three weeks of the year. Then they got to go to Cowboys. So the last three games is going to be their test. The next four are all layups, I think. So you're about to find out what they're actually made of. And then even if they're made of anything, no one cares because they're not going to get past the Niners or the Eagles. Like, am I crazy saying that? I'm not crazy saying that. Hell, I don't even think they're going to beat the Cowboys. Oh, no. <laughs> NFC South, uh, the worst or division in this conference Saints five and five, Falcons four and six, Bucks four and six, Panthers one and nine. I say it every single week. This this division sucks. Or this yeah this yeah this division sucks. The NFC South is the worst, like the absolute worst. No one in this division is going anywhere. Nowhere. All right, moving on over to the AFC. I'm going to refresh this one more time just to see if the Bills have updated. Is that game over? Let me check. There we go. Final. All right. Good. Yep. All right. So it's been updated. <clears throat> Excuse me. The AFC East, Dolphins 7 and 3, Bills 6 and 5, Jets 4 and 6, Patriots 2 and 8. All right. Jets and Patriots, no, they are not a threat to anybody. Uh the the Bills turned it on against the Jets. What can they do against a good team? They just lost to the Broncos. So what what do you I don't know who wants to win this division because the Dolphins can't beat a good team. The Bills are like so middle of the road sometimes, but then can just hang 40 or 30 on like a, a good defense. The Jets are have they have a good defense. They just have a terrible offense. 
terrible offense. So I don't know who's going to win that division. It's one of those two teams, obviously. AFC West, um, back in you know shambles, if you want to call it that. The Chiefs are six, uh, seven and two. Raiders five and six. Broncos four and five. Uh, Chargers four and six. Looking at it, yeah, obviously the Chiefs are probably going to win this, right? The Broncos have surged or turning it around. The the Chargers are floundering. I don't know. Can the Broncos make a run and push at the Chiefs at all? Maybe. Maybe. It's a long shot, but it's there's there's a chance there. But Chiefs should win this division. AFC North, one of the toughest damn divisions there is. The Raider, uh, Ravens, eight and three, Browns seven and three, Steelers six and four, Bengals five and five. Uh, as I said earlier, the Ravens or the Bengals are no longer a threat. Joe Burrow's done for the year. It's going to be a toss up between, I think, the Ravens and the Browns. But depending on how long oh, uh, Rub and Tug is out, I, I see the Ravens running away with this. The Steelers can't keep up. They'll be close. The Jets suck. You damn right they suck, TJ. J E T S S. Suck, suck, suck. I feel you, brother. How about them rubbing tucks? I, I'm, you know. A client met his banker to discuss opening a restaurant in a busy airport. In us, he found a partner that understood the importance of reaching for the sky. First Horizon Bank. Let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Mac. I need a bit. Of, I need a bit of a rub down here this uh, tonight. To be honest, I'm. Oh God, damn, my shoulders are killing me. But Ravens should handle business. I don't think the Steelers have enough uh, power to take on or take over the Ravens. So give me the Ravens out of this conference. As I said again, the Bengals are done. The Browns, if they get rub and tug back, maybe. But uh, yeah, and then the AFC South. It's getting a little interesting in the AFC South. The Jags are seven and three. Texas six and four. Colts five and five. Titans three and seven. The Texans. Come here, I'll rub it down, big boy. You take it easy. Just calm down over there. Calm down. Calm down. Uh, I, I see the Texans making kind of a run at it, to be honest. I really do. I, I think they can actually do some damage. Um, it's going to be an interesting interesting end to this season, to be honest. I, I don't. Jags, sometimes they score 30, sometimes they score three. Texans have been on fire lately. Um, you know, they held on against the Cardinals. The Cardinals tried. They tried their damnedest to get them, but couldn't do it. So, yeah, give me the Jags or the Texans on this. Colts, eh, I don't know how they're going to do. Pop that, uh, bro, no clue what's going on, but it seems very legit. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. So that's it for the NFL. Um, real quick, you know, we're going <clears> to <throat> – we got drinks giving coming up this Thursday – or this Wednesday. So we are going to do something a little bit different. We are going to be – We'll see. Maybe, maybe t- I'll take it easy at first. Maybe just the tip. I got you. I got you. Um, this Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central Time. It'll be real relaxed. I don't know how long we'll go for, but we're not going to do what we normally do for Drinksgiving. Drinksgiving generally lasts hours and hours on end. You know, we'll generally be live on uh, through from like seven to midnight, if not longer. But going to take a little bit of easy this year, just because we're going to. You know, Alan's not Ubering over and not Ubering back. He's going to drive. So. We're going to hang out, and I got to go to the Cowboy game on Thursday with Lizzie. So I'm not trying to be all hungover and just hating life like I do almost every damn Thanksgiving. It just it gets out of hand. So we'll have some beers. We're going to do the beer miss exchange. So we'll have six beers each, and this will this will end the beer miss. Uh, well, it's not even the exchange at this point. We're, we're putting beers in the pool, and then we're going to have the draft essentially the following week. So the week after Thanksgiving, we're going to have – we'll put all – uh, how many beers do we got in this damn thing? 50, what? 50 beers. And we'll go one by one and pick our beers and whichever one we want round by round. And then we'll talk about, I'm off Wednesday. I'll be good and sauced in the chat. DJ, you can come over if you want. I mean, it's up to you. I don't know. We're just going to kind of be hanging out. I think Lizzie's dad might be moved in by then. So we'll, we'll have to probably, we'll probably be able to get a couple hours in and then we'll be going out back. We'll start it. We'll have a fire like we did last week. We'll have some music and shit like that and chill and enjoy ourselves and, and whatnot. But yeah, if you're not part of beer miss, you know, this is something we tell, you know, people you can, you can do with your friends. And also to make it real simple, hell shiner, uh, puts out a, was it 24 pack, a 24 pack of two beers each. You and your friend can go halvesies on it and just have one beer each at last 12, you know, you'll have 12 each. We do 24 beers. And then on Christmas, uh, yeah, 24 beers each. And then on Christmas day, we'll have, you'll shoot your eye out by car box. So, um, the beers range from Pilsner's, Colchis, Stouts, Porter's, IPAs, Hazy IPAs, uh, Milk Stouts, all kinds of beers. Um, the, 
This past week, I went a little bit more on the seasonal beers for Christmas and Christmas themed. I'll do the same this week. Uh, just because, you know, the first couple of weeks were just uh, beers that I know that he'll enjoy or I'll enjoy no matter what we get. But I definitely want some Christmas beers in there. And uh, yeah, here, I mean, they're all on the floor and they're not, I'll, I'll say this. They're not all local breweries. Some of them are national, some of them are international. You know, I have a, a, a damn Peruvian beer down there because I was like, you know what? I want to mix some action in. It's a time of the year to to adventure out there, have some fun and whatnot. So, but here, here's here's on a, a little a note. We're going to talk more about this on Wednesday. But <clears throat> excuse me, our friends over at Brutal Beer Works, uh, Eric posted a message, a video today, and uh, they are officially closing. Brutal Beer Works is closing on December second, which, you know we think about how far back we go with them, our relationship with them. It's been about five years. You know, we were there the day they opened. Um, yeah, we, we actually, we were already a podcast for, I think like five months or something like that. And we, we became good friends with them. We did our first live show like on location at brutal beer works, you know, and we were there for every brutal fest they had, we were set up. We'd interview everybody. We were sitting out there. They were such great hosts. They're such great dudes. Then their wife, you know, them, their wives, their employees. We've never had a bad experience out there. Now I've had bad experiences, but it's because I drink too much, had a little too much fun, and then you know I wake up next day like Jesus Christ, what was I doing? <laughs> but you know, you think about the fundraising we've done with them. Um, you know, we brewed our we brewed a beer with them. Show you real quick. You know, someone asked. You know. Uh, brew, uh, booze and chills asked what I was drinking. Here's what I'm drinking. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's called your, so that's our name of our, that's our, our slogan for our podcast, your least favorite podcast, right? So we named it your least favorite beer. This is a, this was a dry hop Pilsner and it was freaking amazing. It was, it was freaking awesome. So um, it's sad to, it's sad to see another brewery close down in the Metroplex because it's like, you know, it seems like now there's one like every month. But I'll tell you something that really pisses me off. This is annoyed the shit out of me, and I'll probably get uh, fired up about it on Wednesday as well. It's like he made this post, interaction through the effing roof, like over 100 plus, you know, interactions, thousand views on the video, comments. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, this and that or whatever. But I'm like, you didn't give a shit two weeks ago. You know what I mean? You didn't like the post two weeks ago. They were like, hey, we're doing $4 beers or we got trivia or we got, you know, this and that 984 entertainment's going to be out here. You know, we got a special event. We got, you know, sales or specials and da, 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 all this kind of shit. And they're like, you didn't give a shit then, but now you care. I understand that you can't, everybody can't go to all these breweries. You know, I, I don't make it out to brutal as often as I should, but I live 40 minutes away. So I used to roll out there like every other week, but Alan lives down the damn street. He goes there, picks up the beer, brings it back over here, and then we do our beer reviews. And I understand, like I said, everyone can't be, you can't go everywhere to support everyone. I got it. We tried it, you know, we did it during the pandemic, driving all over Dallas, Fort Worth, you know, picking up a case of beer here and here and here. You eventually start liking the places you want to, you know, you go to places that you like. You like the beer, you like the atmosphere and everything like that. And I get it. But don't be like, oh, you know, if you, you know, you didn't give a shit enough before, but don't be there at the end. It's really sad. Like, you know, Alan went over there today, was talking to Eric, had a couple beers. Um, they invited us over for the second, for December 2nd, uh, Saturday. So I think that we're going to be out there. I don't know if they're going to try to do a little sayonara sign off thing, but uh, I'll bring the gear. We'll go live. Crack Jack in the house. What up? What's going on, brother? How you doing? Your least favorite beer? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I mean, we are your least favorite podcast. That's what our tagline is. It's every, you know, it's on all our stickers and all our shit and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm doing good, buddy. Doing good. And so, you know, it does. It just kind of bothers you a little bit when, you know, he'll get, they'll get, anybody will get all that interaction and sadness and, oh, I'm so sorry, blah, 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 blah. It's like, when's the last time you went there? When's the last time you shared one of their posts or interacted? to help push. I mean, it, it's a, a fucking like, you know what I mean? Share it to your story, share it to this, share it to that. I don't know. And you know, I have, we haven't been hit with, Hey, you share our stuff too much. So obviously, you know, we're not overdoing it every so often, but yeah, I mean, we review a beer. There's damn near every week or we go live and we're sitting there drinking a beer from three years ago from them. This beer is 
getting four years old or three years old. So, yeah, I, I don't get it. it. It just it when I saw it, Lizzie and Lizzie showed me the the video or whatever she played it earlier, and I was like, oh, you know, that sucks. And I was like, I'm, I was like, let me pull it up. And I, I saw it. I saw it. Then I was like, you mother. I was like, it, it really did piss me off. Oh well. Oh, let me drill that real quick. So, but yeah, that that it really does suck. And you know what? They're not renewing their lease. Like I said, December 2nd is their last day. Get out there, grab you some beers to store in your fridge, to hide away. If they're still selling pizza, the pizza was so damn good. Like, dude, pepperoni and uh, the jalapeno. Hey, I loved it. Loved it. Um, I'll be out there. Like, I'm probably going to pop out there. I don't know about this weekend, but I'm going to be there for the second. So I will be there for the second. If Alan has something that comes up, I think he said he has a sleepover or something like that um you know his kid's birthday or i don't know what's going on but if he can't make it i'll probably bring the gear and then i'll ask tj to meet me out there uh to to co-pilot with me and help me uh, get through the night but uh you know all the things that they've done for us and done for the community and done for i mean it sucks it really does suck to see um a great uh, group of people you know their dream dry up and die so that's gonna do it see if you can get a keg can't get a keg yeah they don't, I don't know. Well, shit. I mean, they got kegs. I'll find out. I'll, I'll find out. I'll find out for you. I'll see what I can do. Uh, that's going to do it for me. I'm going to go watch this uh, S show of a uh, Sunday night game, which I'll be honest, looking forward to it. And like I said, I've been doing underdog here lately too. So I've got some, uh, some crazy picks in there for tonight, but I uh, don't want to leave you on a sad note. Check us out. Hey, listen. Strike out beer live stream. I, I go live on Sundays, but it's not always planned. If I do, it's about 620 between the, the afternoon games and the late game or the, the night game. But uh, as you see on the screen right here, live Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central Time. We will be here. Uh, we got the beer exchange, the final beer exchange for Beer Miss. Um, it's drinks giving, so it should have it should be a little extra fun. Should be a little extra fun. And uh expect us to go live, especially in the backyard next to the fire. Have a little drink. If you're not part of the Patreon either, you should join it. You get extra bonus content, extra videos, shout outs, blah, 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 blah extra beer reviews, spicy topics as well. That's patreon.com slash strikeout beer. And then also the SB Fantasy Football Podcast. I am working on doing more. Okay. I'm trying. I'm trying, damn it. So you guys have a wonderful evening. I'll see you. Catch y'all Wednesday and maybe tomorrow night too. We'll see. We'll see what Alan's up to. And uh, maybe we'll go live tomorrow night. I love y'all. I'm RD. I'm out of here. Adios. Thanks for listening to Strike Out Beer. New on Curiosity Stream. I'm James Burke. I'm going to take you on a journey through time. James Burke's visionary series returns. Reimagined for our time. Now, this is all uncharted territory. The Washington Post hails Burke as one of the most intriguing minds in the Western world. The New York Times raves he careens from one great moment in history to another. Where do we want to go from here? Experience all new connections. So what's the next connection? With monthly, annual, and bundled plans, find the one that works for you at curiositystream.com.